So, Max, how are you doing? Good, thank you. Thanks for inviting me. Glad to be here. I got a lot of questions for you about uh, this whole underwriting process and how it works and who uses it and how much it costs and all this stuff. But I guess maybe the place to start would be, why do people use you? Like what kinds of customers do you work for or what situation is a business or person in that causes them to call the underwriter and get your help? Great question. Seth, we offer quite a diversity of services. The bulk of our underwriting is owner financed, one to four family occupancy. And that is because it's federally mandated that anybody doing a seller finance transaction on an owner occupied home of one to four units must by law ensure that their borrower meets the eight elements of ability to repay in Dodd-Frank and create an underwriting file that proves that they did that. So that's how the business was born in 2014, was specifically for helping investors gain and maintain compliance in notes for seller financed properties. But now over the years, we've expanded that and we do uh, land contracts, we do vacant land. I do quite a bit of work anymore in maybe a two dozen states on rentals and investment properties. And so now we just basically will just underwrite on a custom basis for any investor that wants underwriting. And so for your folks listening, it's it's important probably to explain the business model because what we do is different based on who you are and what you need. So if you were in Michigan, and you wanted us to underwrite vacant land, we would have far more flexibility in helping you than we would if you were putting a family in an owner-occupied home. When you're putting someone in an owner-occupied home, then we have black and white metrics that have to be observed, and we walk you through how to screen to find the right borrowers that can meet those. And then we underwrite very detailed based on those eight elements of ability to repay. And then at the conclusion of the underwrite, we actually issue a certificate of ability to repay, an ATR certificate. But when we're underwriting for something that doesn't have federal compliance standards, such as vacant land or non-owner occupied, you know, let's say you're buying mobile homes and then you're going to resell them again, or you're buying rental properties, or in your guys' case, you're just buying vacant land to sit on and then find a developer and hope to flip it or resell that note. We can offer custom underwriting, which what that would look like would be on an individual basis. We sit down and have a discussion on what are your concerns? What type of consideration do you want to give for performance of this note and likelihood of future default? And then we together would essentially set the metrics that we're going to screen for. And then uh, we would vet the borrower and then just communicate with you on that specific set of criteria or metrics that you and I, I came up with together. So it's gonna yeah. look custom in every case if it's not owner occupied. No, that's really interesting. And I'm glad we're talking about the difference between vacant land versus like a multifamily owner occupied property. Maybe just quickly run through what are those eight criteria that you would normally have to use under the Dodd-Frank not compliance stuff and then when you're looking at vacant land, like which of those things would apply to vacant land? Or like what yeah. would you suggest a person look at for a vacant land deal? Yeah, great. Well, I would begin that by saying, you know, my motto in life and especially in this business is the best indicator of future performance is looking at past performance, right? Yeah. So if I'm going to invest in a company, the best way of getting an idea where that company is going to go in the next five years is for me to historically look back at where they've been in the last five years. And so with humans or with interviewing, let's say, even for an employee, right? Well, that's what a resume is all about is, what am I gonna get from you if I hire you next year? Well, the best indicator of that's gonna be looking at your resume that shows what you put out last year and the year before. Mm -hmm. And so those are parallel issues in non-owner occupied as well as owner occupied, right? Because they all speak to your credibility. They all speak to your consistency. Is this person known to be a steady Eddie that gets up and goes to work every day and pays his bills? Or is his life a dumpster fire train wreck? And, <laughs> you know, every year, is a laundry list of new defaults and failures to honor commitments with a whole new set of excuses every year. So in a nutshell, 
it's the same everywhere. What's different is that when you and I underwrite for a business deal that's not owner occupied, you're in the driver's seat completely. So you share with me what your concerns are. What do you want to do with this note in the future? And then we create the stringency of the underwriting criteria together to take that file where you want it to go. If you just want to prep it for resale and you're just hoping that it's going to perform for 24 months and you're going to flip it and resell it, you know, we might come up with uh, criteria that are a bit more relaxed than what they would be on owner occupied. So to go back to your original question, uh, to paint a picture of what owner occupied looks like, the eight elements really take a deep dive into the borrowers as humans and individuals and really paint a picture of them from top to bottom financially. So we look at debt to income ratio. We look at a state specific residual income. And th this would be a good example of where this wouldn't necessarily be necessary in your business. In owner occupied, we're looking at residual income. So we don't just have to prove that these people can have enough money to make the PITI of the mortgage. We have to also show that based on what zip code they live in, that these people are going to have enough residual income left over every month to pay utilities, gas, groceries, the things that feed their family. The biggest thing I could say is when we talk about non-owner occupied, it equals flexibility and options for you when you hire mm -hmm. us because there isn't a federal law that we have to stay compliant with. Rather, we're just looking to help cover your bases and ensure your best interest with respect to risk.